Thank you for welcoming me onto your screens, onto your phones, depending on how you're watching this. I'm Eddie, and this is The Rollback. Folks, I'm going to talk to you today about my adventures with Superman, a.k.a. Anime Superman. Dragon Ball Superman? My Hero Superman. One of those. Use one of those. My Adventures with Superman. So, My Adventures with Superman takes probably the most creative liberties I've ever actually seen with these characters. Not just Superman, but with a lot of other, you know, notable characters. Namely, I'd say Parasite. Lex Luthor wasn't really in this. We have... God, there's so much going on here. Um, to start, we have Superman back when he's young, at the very beginning of his career. Not Man of Steel, where he's a grown man, but where he's 12. He's 22, if I'm not mistaken, in this show. Uh, he's just starting out, just figuring out his powers. He has a crush on Lois Lane. He has his best friend, Jimmy Olsen, who's... Actually, his best friend in this show. It's not bad. Um, and we go from there in his day-to-day -day adventures, from saving regular people every now and then, to building up to a bigger conflict. Um, this show, to start, the animation is really cute. You can see where it gets, you know, a little choppy in, in small parts where, okay, clearly they, they prioritize, you know, the animation in this over the, you know, dude walking over here. Um, but the animation, for the most part, is pretty crisp, pretty nice. Um, I think it's mostly hand-drawn, if I'm not mistaken, versus, you know, computer or cell shading or something like that. Now, that said, this show is very well written and very well designed. Um, it may alienate some Superman fans, but, I mean, why not be welcoming to a different outlook on something that's been done a dozen times over? We've had Superman shows over and over and over. Hell, even right now, as we speak, we have Superman and Lois... The TV Thanks show on Max. Uh, I think they're on season three or four. If I'm not You've never seen the son of Jerome so like if we already before. have all these other shows, not to mention the other live action Superman shows, the other um, animated TV shows, we already have all that stuff going on. Why not take the character in a new direction? Because we've already seen the same old, same old. And I'm happy to say this version of the character is refreshing. He feels like an everyman. He feels. And I, he kind of makes a point of saying that that's not okay to say this. Normal? It's it's the most human I've ever seen Superman. More than, and again, this is no shade, but he seems more normal in this show, more everyman, than he ever has in any live-action adaptation or animated adaptation. Because, if, for example, in the, the New Adventures of Superman, for example, um, he felt he was always in Superman costume. It never felt like he was worrying about Lois, you know, and again, that's not to besmirch that show. It's an incredible show, 10 out of 10, go watch it on your own. But this interpretation is vastly different, but still just as, if not, maybe even better. Because we see him struggling with keeping his identity a secret, trying to do everything, trying to help everyone. We Hang get on. the answer to the question, well, if we can hear everything, does he does he all crime, or does he stop all crime? No. He fucking cries. In addition to that, we also get a bunch of like little adventures that feel almost like old, old-timey comic book serials, where in one episode he goes hunting for Bigfoot, in a different episode he's dealing with this millionaire douchebag who is not uh, Lex Luthor. Instead, he deals with Professor Ivo, who is also the parasite to some degree. We have a different version of Banshee. We have a different version of oh God, what's the lightning, uh, lightning person? Um, Oh god, I can't remember her name. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. The point is, is that we get a lot of different versions of these characters. We have a Deathstroke this. in this show. He doesn't have the traditional man, like, Deathstroke look, day. but we have him in this show. We also have Amanda Waller and Task Force X. But none of the notable characters that we typically have, we don't have Harley Quinn. We don't have um, Deathshot or any of those guys. Instead, we have a bunch of, let's be honest... B and C tier villains from Superman that were stepped up into A tier because they were attacking him as a team. Um, and then we see Superman growing into his own, growing into his powers. We see him dealing with the public and to an understandable degree why they would turn on him. They even make a point of saying his powers are unchecked. Like he's a, he's a threat if nothing else. And people begin to get scared of him because they see him doing these things that they don't understand. They frame him. Task Force X frames him and begin to find out why. Because a long time ago, like there was an invasion, the an attempted invasion uh, by sorry, Kryptonian. No comment. Um, which again, we'll go into probably season two of this, the but the look of the show is great. The writing is great. There's also a lot of character redesigns that, again, I can understand might be divisive. 
they they fuse Professor Ivo with Parasite to make this one character who has like a kaiju moment at one point, uh, turning into a giant monster. Very reminiscent of Evangelion. Evangelion? Evangelion. I don't know what the correct pronunciation of that show is. But it's very invoking of that look. Uh, also, the battle suits look a lot like that. Um, we get a point of origin for Superman where maybe he was part of the first force of an invasion, but his pod just happened to land on Earth. Um, we also get Superman fighting alongside his father at one point, which is I thought was kind of cool. And then we get a recreation of Superman falling back down to Earth. We also have this great tension between you know Lois and, and Clark as to will she find out that he's Superman, which thankfully this show treats Lois with the respect that she does deserve. And yes, she does find out he is Superman relatively early on, which I don't hate. Him and Jim, Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy even makes a point of saying, I always knew you were Superman. I just wanted you to tell me when you were ready. Lois, I know. Which is nice. Superman. It's huh? nice to, to see these things. You think he's a plane? Also, a lot of inclusivity. We have this looks like a bird. one episode where there's a relationship going on between a gorilla and a robot, which, hey man, you experience your life yourself. By all means, go be happy. They're kind of cute, not gonna lie. But all that said, this is a very different take from Superman. This completely abandons the old school look and the old school vibe. This is a new take on all these characters, and admittedly, brave take, I'll say that much. Uh, comic book fans, uh, myself not included, uh, and I'll say that, myself not included, are not necessarily known for taking on you know a change in scenery in the best way possible. We like things to stay the same because it's tradition, damn it. But this show took a lot of liberties, and I'm honestly happy to say most of them stuck. Most of them are great. The redesigns I enjoy, because again, we've seen all this before. This is a new take on an old character, and it genuinely feels refreshing. Uh, my Adventures with Superman, I don't know if it's already been picked up for Season 2, but if it hasn't, it should be. It's a critical darling. Audiences, from what I can tell, enjoyed it. Um, but what did you think? Go in a comment down below. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, for me, this show is definitely going to be an A, and I'm looking forward to season two. Hopefully, we don't have to wait that long. But yeah, um, like and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. We're trying to grow this channel, and we'll catch y'all later. See everyone.